and to tell you that wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. As slaves were called to submit to their masters, wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, submit to your wives. That even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Now, let me ask you a question. This is why I'm able to tell you this goes to the husband and the wife. Is it only the husbands that don't believe and maybe their believing wives can save them? No. Or do you have wives that don't believe and husbands that do? Yes. So the counsel is to both. Amen. And if the shoe is on the other foot, then it's the husband who needs to show by his love and submission Christ and win his wife. Or win his children. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So that when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, they may be one. So listen, do not let your adornment be merely outward. This is husbands and wives. We may not plait our hair. We may not wear makeup. I hope we don't wear makeup, guys. <laughs> In this day and age, you just sometimes you just don't know. But I can buy a $3,000 watch. I can buy a $100,000 car. I can buy a million dollar house. Right? What's the difference between that and makeup and jewelry? It's the same thing if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, right? So the counsel is the same. The principle is the same and applies to both. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at verse 17 and 18. Actually, let's look at verse 16. Colossians 3:16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of who? Lord the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now listen, there's a reason why these verses are put before verse 18. Verse 18. What does it say? Wives. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Verse 19, husbands, what? Love your, Love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. And then it says in verse 20, what? Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Now, ladies, if you have a problem with this submission to men, what do you say for children who have to submit to their parents even though their parents are horrible? You realize that you won't find one verse in Scripture that gives you an out if your parents are horrible. Right? What does the commandment say, right? Just honor your mother and your father so that your life may be prolonged, your days may be prolonged on this earth, right? It doesn't say honor your mother and father as long as they were good to you and provided for you. But what happens when your parents, you know, are the drug addicts? What happens when your parents are the abusive ones? And you grew up your whole life with that. And now you become an adult and you say, I will never be around them again. But yet the Bible is telling you, honor your mother and your father. All that you have to also say parents provoke not your children and honor too. Yes. Yes, but even if you were a bad parent, what is your responsibility as a child to your parents? Honor. Honor them. Why? Because Christ set an example that if he suffered, that we should do the same. That if he suffered and did not retaliate, if he suffered and continued to love those who abused him, then what example did he leave for us? This is what is pleasing to God. Why is that pleasing to God? Because it shows that we now have the character of Christ manifested in us. Now listen very carefully. I'm not telling you to stay in an abusive situation. I'm not telling you that you have to endure that. You 
find yourself in that situation, you need to get out of that as soon as you can. But children don't have that opportunity or choice, but they can. Okay? Kyla? You said <clears throat> men don't wear makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I have met a lot of men who do. Yes, they do. What's, what's that stuff they put on your face and your arms and your hands when you die? It's makeup. <laughs> That's my girl. Yes? Yes? Cool. Of course, that's not by self-choice. No, that's right. <laughs> I pray to God that's the only time you ever see me make up. <laughs> okay, look, that was Colossians. Um, turn with me. Uh, you guys, will you give me a little bit more time? I really want to finish this. Sabbath all day long. Right. Amen. Thank you for your patience. Okay, we are going to turn to 1 Corinthians. Let me find it here. First Corinthians chapter 7. But while you're there at chapter 7, let's uh, again uh, I'll set the foundation with uh, the last parts of chapter 6. Let's look at verses 15 through 20. Chapter 6 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of who? Christ. Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. What is that a quote from? The two shall become one. Isn't that done in marriage? Yes. That when you marry someone, the two now shall become one. Right? Let's look at verse 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are what? Not your, not your own. own. Understand this. This is important. For you are brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, let's look at verse 3. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. Verse 4, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. You are not your own. When you get married, you now live for the betterment of your spouse. And your spouse now lives for the betterment of you. You are to look for after her needs, and she is to look after yours. And if you do that, you will have the biblical submission within your family in 2015. It's not about, well, I'm the guy, whatever I says goes, and you have to listen to me. It is, I love you, I respect you, I am here for you. And you, your thoughts, your input into this marriage is just as important as mine. I will listen to you, I will submit, and I will learn. But you, in turn, have to do the same thing. Right? That's what this is about. Now, I happen to be blessed with having to get to work with young 20-year-olds on a regular basis. <laughs> young 20-year-old men. And young 20-year-old men, if they know the Bible, they always know these verses about the submission part. Because, do you remember when you were 19 and 20 and were in relationships? And uh, it's funny because it never changes. The girl would drive the guy nuts. And the guy would drive the girl nuts. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's because all of the ports in their brains haven't plugged in yet. So this is what a guy thinks. Ladies, I have no idea what you thought. I still don't know what you think. <laughs> One day I might be able to figure it out, but I kind of doubt it. But I do know what a guy thinks. At that age, the guy thinks, oh man, I'm in charge. You should listen to me because you're not that smart. You don't try that well. 
all make good decisions. But look at me. I'm a man. I drive well. I make good decisions. And I'm smart. Okay? So should I submit to you? No. Should you submit to me? Yes. Why can't you see it? I see it. And they go into adulthood and they never change that attitude. That's the problem. Right? And that's why we have the problems that we have today. Now, ladies, like I said, I have no idea how you think, so I'm just, just I don't even want to go there. <laughs> But what I do know is what the Bible <coughs> talks about. And I know my God well enough to know that what He says is true. Yes. And that what He exhorts me to do, if I were to listen to Him, it is the best. Right? Okay, so... One last text. Turn with me to Ephesians. Chapter 5. Let's look at verses uh, let's look at verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. What's that first word? Save. Oh, there you go. Oh. Still grinding? Just, you know, submit. Do you know why it's there over and over again? Because God knows that we always have a problem with this part. Because this, this, brothers and sisters, is going to show whether you have really taken Christ and whether you're really in Christ or whether you're just playing. Being the hypocrite, the actor. Well, let's look at what he did for us. Exactly. So, if you still want to control everything, if you have a problem with submitting, the problem isn't with the man, the problem isn't with the woman, the problem is between you and your God. Okay? And I know this is blue my pages a little bit. Let me find it again. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, right? What verse did I say? Okay. First word is submitting. Not submit. Submitting. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now, I love this verse because it doesn't pick men or women. It just tells every one of us. Who are we submit to? We are to submit to one another. Listen, this is how a church is supposed to work. You call me pastor. It doesn't mean that I make all the decisions here. It wasn't until, I think it was last week, that I actually had a key for this place. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. <laughs> How many years, John? <laughs> you look at Patty. She's our music leader right here. But she doesn't make all the musical decisions, does she? I give Ricky the bulletin information and tell him what songs that I want. You look at Ricky as our head elder. You look at Red. You look at the other leaders here. We are leaders, but as Ray said, we are to be servant leaders, not dictators. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to hopefully be an example and to live a life that shows you that Christ is real, that Christ lives in me, and that what I speak, I speak out of knowledge of what Christ has done in me. Amen. Okay, so. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. There you go, ladies. I told you. This is the one verse that is given to you. Only one. Now let's look where it goes from here. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. 
Verse 25. What does it say? Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And you think that it ends of his speaking to the husbands, but it doesn't. This whole next section that speaks of the bride is speaking to the husband and how you are to act towards your wife. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. He didn't go off on a tangent here. He's trying to make a point to husbands of how you are to act and what your responsibility is within your family and to your wife and to your children. Because it goes in verse 28. He didn't go off on a tangent and then brings it back. He makes a point. And the point was how Christ sanctified the church, cleansed her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but she should be holy and without blemish. Mm -hmm. What does it say after that? You got that verse right? Yes. Can you read it? Sure. So ought men to love their wives. Stop. So ought men, you're reading from the King James. Yes. So husbands ought to love their wives. Why? So that the husband can present her without spot and blemish, just like Christ brings the church. You understand? He didn't go off on a tangent here. He's telling you what high calling men you've been called to. When we look at 1 Peter, Peter is telling the wife, that in your chaste conduct, even if your husband is an unbeliever, submit to him and you may win him for Christ. Now, here in Ephesians, Peter, Paul is telling you, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, that you can present your wife without spot and blemish through your love. And that if you are submitting to each other, the love you show her and the love she shows you and the love you show your children will be passed on from one generation to the next, and you will be without spot. Hallelujah. Does that make sense to you guys? Amen. Right? Can you go on and finish? Yes. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Keep going. For no man ever hath hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. I want you to understand here, Paul's thought. He, as I said, is not going off on a tangent when he's talking about husbands, and then he's going off on how beautiful and spotless the church should be. He is telling husbands, this is what your calling is. You have submitted to Christ... And you now are in his place. You represent him. And the wife is supposed to submit to your leadership because you represent Christ. You are to present her without spot and blemish. How? By the love you have for her. That you're willing to die for her. That you would do anything. What man hates his own body? You love yourself, so you're going to take care of yourself. So if you take care of yourself, you should treat your wife the same. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. That is what biblical submission is. Let me tell you something here, ladies. You get to see what it says here. But men, if you understand what this verse is calling you to, you're being called to something much higher and much more responsibility than the exhortation that's given to the ladies that submit to their husbands. The ladies, it's only done as you see your husbands as Deborah said, submitting to God. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. The closing hymn this morning is hymn number 462.